I'm in love with you. Snap out of it! You've been just thinking that. Once you've been up there, you know you've been so blessed. Hello and welcome to another edition of Arizona Public Media's Hollywood at Home. I'm Victoria Lucas. Get ready for adventure because tonight we bring you the exciting and unusual World War II action film, The Great Escape from 1963. You know, there are classic films and then there are those very few that take on a life of their own, and The Great Escape is one of the best. Directed by John Sturgis, the film stars, well, just about everybody. We have Steve McQueen, Charles Bronson, and James Coburn from The Magnificent Seven, also directed by Sturgis, James Garner from the Maverick television series, young David McCallum, before The Man from UNCLE, Richard Attenborough, not yet Sir Richard, and veteran character actor Donald Pleasance. The film is based on the book of the same name, a first-hand factual recounting by former POW Paul Brickhill of one of the largest prisoner of war escapes during World War II. But rather than the book's emphasis on degradation and constant fear of death at the hands of the Nazis, director John Sturgis chose to keep this classic action-adventure drama firmly focused on human strengths, the camaraderie and cooperation among men thrown together into bleak and demoralizing circumstances adding a wealth of bravado stunts, exciting action sequences, and even a good helping of humor. And yes, that really is fearless biker Steve McQueen doing many of his own stunts on the motorcycle. Given how popular the film became, it's surprising that director John Sturgis had trouble finding a studio to back the project. For example, Louis B. Mayer, head of MGM, quickly rejected the script, saying there were too many characters and the ending was too tragic and downbeat. Luckily, the Mirish Company and United Artists saw the potential in the ensemble piece and came up with a $3.9 million budget based on shooting the film in California for both financial and logistical reasons. But Sturgis and crew couldn't find a location that resembled a Bavarian forest with surrounding Alp-like mountains. As the director said, only Germany looks like Germany. Uh, so the three-month shoot took place in rural Bavaria, where the impressive exteriors of the POW camp were built in a clearing surrounded by dense forests. In fact, Hikers occasionally found themselves taken aback as they stumbled upon what appeared to be an uncharted Nazi camp, later breathing a sigh of relief upon learning that it was just a movie set. Meanwhile, interiors of the barracks and the elaborate tunnel sets were built on the studio sound stages in Munich. Tunnels were constructed out of plaster and dirt, open on one side with a dolly track running along the full length of the set so the camera could travel with the prisoners as they scoot through. And director Sturgis chose to shoot in widescreen Panavision, not only to add scope to the outdoor action scenes and beauty shots, but specifically to emphasize the length and narrowness of those claustrophobic escape tunnels. Many of the cast and crew had military and other real-life experience that helped to ensure the details of the story were authentic. Remember, the movie was made only 17 years after the war ended. For instance, actor Donald Pleasance, who plays the forger, 
had spent the last year of the war as a POW after his bomber was shot down over Nazi territory. And former aerial gunner Charles Bronson, who plays the tunnel master, had worked as a coal miner before turning to acting. So he provided advice on earth moving to make the tunnel sequences more authentic. Yet, despite everyone's contributions and hard work, the shoot started to fall behind schedule as day after day of heavy spring rains slowed construction of the prison camp, forcing the company to move into the studio earlier than planned. This adversity served to bring the cast and crew closer together. Director Sturgis was surprised to discover that many of the English actors, including Richard Attenborough and David McCallum, pitched in to help when they weren't scheduled to be on camera. As he remembered, they'd get into costume to play a guard or an anonymous prisoner in the background while helping to manage the other extras. Or they'd join in carrying equipment into and out of the set if it would save the crew an extra trip. They didn't have to do it, but they did it anyway for the good of the picture. Meanwhile, Steve McQueen, on the cusp of international stardom, was determined to make the most of his role in the film. When he saw that his character spent a great deal of time in the isolation cell, while other actors, most notably James Garner, had more substantial scenes, McQueen fought for more screen time and got it with the brilliant motorcycle chase sequence, which was not in the original script and was completely fictional. Once you've seen it, you won't forget it. And McQueen knew that. His fellow actors recognized McQueen's star presence as well. Tom Adams, who plays an RAF officer, was both impressed and bemused. He told this story in 2003. There was McQueen, nice looking, but only about five foot seven and skinny. However, if he walked into a bar with us on nights out in Munich, the women would be around him like, whew, leaving the rest of us to wonder, what's he got anyway? <laughs> well, McQueen had charm, and he certainly had chutzpah. David McCallum remembered McQueen driving his car like a maniac, taking such crazy risks that the traffic police almost seemed in awe of him. As McCallum put it, when he was pulled over, they'd say, Herr McQueen, good morning. We are delighted that once again you have won the special prize. And then they'd cart him off to jail. McQueen had studied acting under Sandy Meisner and Stella Adler, the top coaches of the day, but he had a realistic sense of his abilities, and he always downplayed his talent. He told an interviewer, I'm not a great actor, let's face it, I don't have a great deal of scope, but there are certain things I can do pretty well. Well, he obviously stuck with those certain things because by 1974, he was the highest paid actor in the world. The Great Escape was a huge box office success, one of the top grossing films of 1963. Elmer Bernstein's jaunty theme music made the soundtrack album a smash hit that remains popular to this day. And of course, the image of McQueen on the motorcycle became an entire generation's shorthand for cool. So now please sit back and enjoy the film that cemented his meteoric rise to stardom. From 1963, it's The Great Escape. 